Hello, lads and lasses. Lord Windermere here. Uh, I was thinking it's time for a fountain pen shootout. Yes, and today we'll be having a look at two pens by Pelican, the M1000 and the M800. I did the same thing for Mont Blanc with the, uh, with the 149 and the 146. I thought we'd compare these two today. I have separate reviews of these pens on my channel, so if you're interested in either of them, please check out the separate reviews for you know more in-depth information. Okay, two pens from the Sovereign range of Pelican. Pelican has been around for a long time. I think it's one of the oldest ink brand, uh, sorry, uh, um, pen brands still in operation. Um, the flagship pen, the M1000, this is the green finish, also comes in black, and the M800 in the tortoise brown finish also comes in black and, and um, um, uh, the, 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 the green and I think the blue, but not the red, or well, it does come in the red, doesn't matter, there's a bunch of finishes you can get, let's put it that way. Both pens have 18 karat gold nibs, these nibs are very nice, a lot of detail on them. Uh, nice things you can you can see there. Um, the piston fillers, you can see the ink level through the barrel if you hold it to the light, which is a very nice touch. Um, clearly the M1000 is the bigger one of the two. Uh, it's on the uh, this side here, the green one. It's a bit bigger, and the nib is a bit bigger too. A bit broader, I mean wider, and a bit longer. Uh, I like them both. I think that these are two very nice pens. Uh, I, I really love using them. Piston filled, nice amounts of ink, um, two very cool pens. So, if you absolutely need a huge pen, then you probably, well, huge, a very big one, you need the M1000, and otherwise you can get the M800. Um, what I'll do next, because I think I've, I've talked about them enough, and uh, there's sort of, I don't think one is a lot heavier than the other, the M1000 is bigger, but both are resin, so they're not very heavy pens anyway. Um, what I'll do next is I'll show you how to take them apart, and I'll do a writing sample. So I hope that's going to be useful, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, M800 Tortoise, M1000 in green. How do you take these apart? Well, the simplest part is the nib. I always like to put the nib in the sort of the, the, the crook of my finger, and then I put my thumb on the um, the, the feed. You don't have to push down very hard, you just gently unscrew the barrel and out comes the whole nib and feed unit. Uh, if you want you can clean that, you can flush out the pen directly and you can put that back in there. Something else you can do if you want to get the um, the piston unit out is take a Twisby wrench, you get those with uh, well, pretty much any Twisby pen, 540 um, Vax 700, I believe. The Mini, in any case, I uh, always have to... Yeah, okay. So you twist this to the right, and then pop goes the weasel, or the pelican in this case. Um, there you got your piston. You put some silicon grease right there, you put some silicon grease right there, you put the little bugger back in, turn the Twisby wrench the other way around. You don't want to over tighten this because this is resin and it will crack. That will be a very very bad thing to happen because cracks are very annoying to repair. Um, there you go. Now we have the M800. Exact same procedure. Take the nib out by unscrewing it like this. Open up the piston. Put that wrench in. And there you go. This was the first time I did it with this pen, so it was in there a little more tightly. Pop goes the pelican. Silicon grease, silicon grease, maybe a bit of silicon grease. Put it back in, and you can, if you really need to, take all of this out. Okay? So. Now, the question is, can I get this back together again? Of course I can. The question is how? Um, you take this bit, you take that bit, only fits in one way. See? 
leave it to stick out a bit. Now the cap will not go in far enough. So what I want to do, I want to get that cap on there quite a bit. You'll have to experiment a bit with that. See, this would be nice, but now it doesn't draw up the piston all the way. This is fiddling around. Actually, maybe it's a good idea to, to show you that. Um, you want the cap, this blind cap, or the piston turning knob, to go down there all the way. Otherwise, when you put this back in the barrel, there will be a gap. You don't want to gap because a gap is ugly. So what do you want? You want this in there in such a manner that it is drawn back as far as you can because that will give you ink capacity. If it only draws back up to this point then it will draw up a lot less ink because the piston will be sticking out in the barrel. You understand that, right? Now this seems to be good, but the problem is if I put this back in uh, other way, I'm getting confused here. I hope I'm not boring you to death. If I am, you just have to fast forward a bit. You see, this is the problem. Now this is okay, but this will just pop off. It's it's not on there the correct way. So I unscrew this bit again, and we'll see what we can do. First of all, this will have to go on further down a bit, something like that. That looks better to me. Now I've got the piston in there quite a long way. Can we get it in there even further? Let me see, how do we do that? Take this a bit further back down. That's better. So maybe something like this. You know, I could live with this. This bit of Can I get it even more optimal? I don't think so. I think this is as good as I can get this. Yeah, something like that. That seems to be a good position that it, it sort of naturally goes into. Okay, then I open that up a little bit so that I can grab this bit with the wrench. It can only be grabbed in one way, so don't worry that that would be difficult. Beautiful. Good fit. Good ink capacity. I'm going to wipe my fingers. I don't want to get the grease on the nib of the feed. In fact, I'm going to be so careful that I'm actually using a bit of tissue here because I don't know which parts of my fingers have touched that grease. Okay, so there you go. You don't have to make that too tight. Don't over tighten anything. Done. Now I'll ink these up and um, you know what, I'll ink this one up, if possible. Is there enough ink in here? This is Parker Quink. I fear I've already bored you to death, so I'll do the other one off camera. Uh, when, I, uh, when I return, we'll do a writing sample. See you in a second. Okay, so here we go. What we have is the M1000 in double broad. The paper is Rhodia, a Rhodia notebook. No resistance from the paper. And this is very smooth paper, but the nib is superb. There we go. Okay. Then, on the other hand, whoops, sorry. I hit the uh, tripod. In the other corner we have the M800. This is triple broad. That's a lot of B's, so usually people say 3B. Um, that's a lot of jumping going on there. Again, very smooth, extremely pleasant writing. 
I really, really love both of these nibs. I think they're really, really nice. What about flexibility, line variation? The Pelican nibs have something of a a, um, a reputation for being quite springy, and as you can see here, they really are a nice bit of spring, beautiful broad lines, and some finer lines too. So that's really, really nice. Then we have, notice how wet this is, you see, even this, this quink is, is actually feathering a bit. Um, the triple broad, clearly broad by nature, it's a triple broad, offers a bit of springiness too, feels responsive, but not as responsive as the M1000. That seems to spring and, and open up a little bit easier under pressure. Still, Another very nice nib, very smooth. I really love those nibs. Okay, well, the final check I'll do here is some fast, not some fast writing, but some, some wetness. I've always found the M1000 to be quite wet. I'll cap it, put it away. See, nice and wet. Cap it, put it away. Yeah, maybe a little less wet. That was my feeling too. The M1000 is extremely wet. You can also see that by the feathering, right? You see a bit more feathering right there and a little less there. Um, in all, two very, very nice pens. I really love both. I would recommend both without any reservations. Um, so, there you have it. A shootout between two, uh, well, mammoths, I would uh, say. Two pens that I love dearly. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.